the Lebanese are forced to share their country. Around 400,000 Palestinians also live in Lebanon, but it's not their home. Home, for them, is in a country called Palestine, to which they cannot return, despite the PLO-Israeli accord. Most of these are Palestinians whose families fled their homes in 1948, when Israel was created. The land these Palestinians owned is now in Israel. Did your father have papers to show the owners? Of course, of course. They have documents. These documents show all the property which my father owned in Acre, mm -hmm. including the house. Mm -hmm. And the house was built at what, what year was the house built? 1935. And he was the first owner? Your yes. Father. He built the house. He, he built owned. it himself? Yes. Yosef Shibel fled his home in what is now Israel 45 years ago, and like the thousands who ran away during the Jewish-Arab war, he's forbidden by the Israelis from returning. We thought that we were leaving for just a short period of time. We left our furniture, we just picked our light material and clothes, and then we left north to Lebanon. And what else do you have? I have here two photos, one with my friends. Where are you on this picture? This is my, to the far left. You're smiling a lot in that picture. Yeah. Where is this taken? This in is at the backyard of our house, the eastern part. And this, I'm riding a bicycle here, coming from the southern street, which leads to our house. How old are you here in this picture? 13 years. This is just before you left? Just five, six months before I left. Could you draw me a map of where your house is in Of course, in I can draw a map. This is a roundabout? Yeah, this oh. is a uh, It's a main road intersection. Yeah, it was a, a main road intersection. And after you cross 500 yards, you go to your left 400 yards. And there is the house of my father, Ahmed Shiv. Yusuf, that map is so good. If I went to Acre, do you think I could, I could find your house from that I'm map? sure you will find it within a few minutes. It, it has if you follow the map, accurately. Are you sure it hasn't changed? I don't know. What happened those 45 years? Forty-five years after Yusuf Shibel fled his home, the Israelis forced another group of Palestinians into Lebanese exile, this time from the occupied West Bank and Gaza. They formed a small Islamic Republic here in the mountains. These men are members of Hamas, Israel's most dangerous Palestinian enemy. They now wish to destroy Yasser Arafat's peace deal with Israel. Thanks very much, Abba. Thank you. These were not ordinary Palestinian refugees. They were to become the most famous Palestinian deportees in the world, trapped on a hillside between Lebanese and Israeli front lines. But for these men, their exile meant something else, a chance to plan the religious Islamic nation they want to create when they go back home. Their anger against the West can be found not only here in Lebanon, but inside the West Bank and Gaza itself, among Muslims in Egypt, even now among the Muslims of Bosnia. Hamas is an Islamic organization aiming to liberate uh, Palestine and establishing uh, an Islamic state rather than a secular state. When you say Palestine, you mean all of British Mandate Palestine, including Israel? That's right. But to achieve this Islamic state and to struggle for it, Hamas is fighting. When the Israelis killing our kids, our children, shelling our houses, what, what you could do? Hamas and all other organizations will fight against this uh, kind of treatment of our people inside the occupied territories. Do you really think you can win against the Israelis? 
Yes, I am sure. But Israel has America on its side. And we have our own power, which is Allah. Even for Western reporters like myself, it's not easy to travel the 100 miles from my home in Beirut to Israel and to the land the refugees call Palestine. Today, I have to pack, feed the cat, and close down my home. My newspaper, The Independent, keeps two correspondents in the Middle East, myself in Beirut and a colleague in Jerusalem. If the borders were open, the journey would be a mere three hours drive. Yosef Shibel's home at Acre is just on the other side of the frontier, but the borders have been closed since 1948. So I have to make a 300 mile journey. From Beirut, I travel to the island of Cyprus on a Lebanese aircraft, then catch a flight to Israel. But I'd have to delay that search for Yosef Shibel's home because Gaza was in revolt. The road to Gaza, to what is supposed to become Yasser Arafat's Palestine, stretches south to an Israeli roadblock that even before the PLO-Israeli accord looked like an international frontier post. Hi. Uh, We're going to Gaza, British journalist, Channel 4 Television. Thank you. What lay beyond was a world of destitution and bitterness. There was Hakam, a Palestinian journalist, right on cue to meet me. Even the new Israeli car in which I was traveling had to be exchanged for an old car with Gaza plates. Hamas men shoot at cars with Israeli plates. What a great car you have here. What a heap of rubbish. This would have been put on a junk heap a long time ago in Beirut. Hakam and I were to be witnesses to some of the last days of Israeli rule, days of violence which would shape the land which Yasser Arafat was to inherit. We had driven into a curfew which had restricted tens of thousands of Palestinians to their homes. Is your curfew finishing now? It's finished? Your curfew is over? You had a curfew here. Is it finished now? No, but uh, you're uh, hanging around. You're hanging around or we are? We are. You're not. Not to picture you. Not to picture all the army. I close this area if you You will close the area if we keep filming. If you filming. If I keep filming, you'll close the area. Okay. The Israeli curfew covered most of Gaza City. هاي مرت أخوي بتطلق وطلعت أم توديها المستشفى رجحها عدا هي في الدار. The wife of my brother is going through labor right now to have a baby. My mother tried to take her this morning to the hospital. The soldiers sent her back and she's going to have to have the baby inside. Is she here now? هلا هي جوا هون؟ هاي جوا. Yes, she is inside. And have the soldiers been told about this? وحك وحكت أم مثل الجيش إنه لا بدها. آه وقالها أنت تكذب علينا ورجحها. Yes, and the soldier told uh, her, uh, her mother, his mother, you are lying to us, go back. Can we see the family? Can we meet them? Through there. Can we come now? Can we come in? No, there's an army. Where? Coming. All right, OK. Do you speak English? I'm British journalist Robert Fisk of The Independent. This is a crew from British television channel 4. Uh, I don't speak Hebrew. Can you speak English to me? Do you have a paper? My pass? Yes. Sure. Can you speak English, 
please. Uh, We're British Television. My name is Robert Fisk of The Independent. Can you speak English? Do any of you speak English? Because there's a lady in here who's expecting a baby. Lester, would you mind uh, stop shooting now? Can you... Just a minute. Stop shooting, please. 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 When we asked the other soldiers, they told us to get the UN, but I don't know where the UN ah, are. It says that they, they are already take, take her to the hospital. She's gone to the hospital already? Yeah. Are you sure? There was a vehicle to take her to the hospital. Okay, so it's gone. Okay, okay thank you. So the woman had been taken to hospital, but had she? What is your wife's name? Amal Lubad. Amal. How old is she? 16 years old. Hakam. I'd like to talk to this lady. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, and uh, it's my Robert Fisk, I'm in Jareda Independent, in London. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Amal, are you expecting your baby now? Are you going to get the baby? Yes, I'm going to I have stomach aches and back aches. When did this start? When did this start? From 4 o'clock in About 4 o'clock this morning. Before the curfew came. Before they put the money? It was already imposed by then. Is it her first baby she's had? Had our Yes. Yes. Okay, let's see if we can get her to the hospital. Palestinians have been living under these conditions for two decades. But even five years ago, I doubt if this pregnant woman would be wearing an Islamic veil. Five years ago, the Israelis wouldn't have been fighting Hamas and other armed Islamic groups in the streets of Gaza. Palestinian doctors at the UN hospital found the girl was suffering from tension and anxiety. She was detained overnight. <laughs> Occupation is corrosive. The all-seeing eye of the occupiers watches over the occupied. The occupiers are masters. The law imposes rather than protects. You do what soldiers tell you to do. Gala, die. Finished for today. One, three, six on the air. Okay. Take your things and go away. It's finished. It's over. It's a close meter. The area is closed right and you you might not uh, take pictures here. Okay. okay. How far back can we go? I mean, we're obviously moving you, around the city. I mean. uh, no matter how far back, mm -hmm. what is the matter that you can't uh, take pictures? Israeli soldiers are searching for a Hamas gunman. If they find him, the people who live here will be made to suffer. We'll call it Gaza, G-A-Z-A. -A. And it's for Foreign Desk, and it's from Robert Fisk, Gaza City. We could hear the explosions all day, comma. Punctuated by rifle fire 
and the throb of a Huey, H-U-E-Y, gunship that circled the slums point. The Israelis were busy losing their war in Gaza, point paragraph. Of course, comma, it did not feel like that to the Palestinians, point. Next day, we discovered the Israeli soldiers had withdrawn. Now at last we could find out the cause of those explosions we'd heard. Had the Israelis found the Hamas gunmen? And if so, how had they responded? What had happened in this area of Gaza City was routine. The Israelis had shot dead the Hamas gunmen and then systematically destroyed all the Palestinian homes in the area in which they'd found him. The soldiers fired anti-tank missiles into these buildings, making homeless all those Palestinians who lived here. Many of these people fled their homes in Palestine in 1948 and have already been refugees here for 45 years. Here is the reason for the Israelis' violence. This is where the Hamas gunman was killed by the soldiers. Pages of a Koran have been left at the scene. The demolition of these homes was to provide the Islamic movement and its supporters with further reason to hate the Israelis. How many buildings in all have been destroyed here? Uh, about 17. 17 buildings? Yes. And that's how many people? How many people in the house? Uh, maybe, let, let us say, about 10 per one. So we're talking of 170 people Minimum. without homes? Minimum. We are waiting since 1947 for help. You think that we have a long time to arrive? More 50 years we have to wait for help, or what? Where does help come from? from I think it's coming from Allah, from God, nothing more. What will people do if they turn to God for help? What will they do? How will their, their mood change? They have to change their mind. We, they have to change the thinking about others. Do you? Have you changed your mind? Are you beginning to change? Well, uh, he, when I so like this, when I see this, I have to change. Have inside forces said you have to change. No any help, no, any, no anything. I am walking about 40 years and keeping money, saving money and have a building and at once nothing. Who can help me? You will give me money from your pocket to, to have another building? Who can give me? I have to help myself. I have to help my neighbor and to help the other. Then God can help me. God, it seems, is sending Yasser Arafat to help the people of Gaza. Under the PLO-Israeli agreement, European money will pay for the rebuilding of this city and PLO men will control these streets. 
but Hamas doesn't accept the Palestinian-Israeli accord. Well, there's going to be more dead at the end of today, aren't there? This, therefore, is the land that Israel is bequeathing to Yasser Arafat. Having destroyed so many homes, the Israelis return to the streets to await the fury of the Palestinians. Reporters are not welcome. This is signed by the, the commander of the, mm -hmm. of the area from the 20th until the 25th, right. the 25th, today is the 24th. Right. I, I ask you to leave now. Okay, the, uh, this was filled in this morning? Yes. Or? yes. Filled in this morning? Yes, and you have the signature, sort of. Shati, okay, mm -hmm. I ask right you to leave law. now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I ask you now uh, nicely to leave the, the area totally, okay? Watched at a distance by the Israelis, Hamas, the Palestinians who oppose Arafat, rallied their supporters within hours. The Israelis had taken away the torso of Zachariah Shabaji, the dead gunman. Hamas had retrieved his head and buried it beside this memorial gathering for their latest martyr. <laughs> How Arafat and the PLO deal with these militants in Gaza will either guarantee or destroy the new accord with Israel. Zakaria Shabaji, another hero for those who oppose Arafat, created overnight, courtesy of the Israeli army. In a land under occupation, there are few bounds to the cynicism of those who resist. This is Hamas, delivering food to the family of a man whom they themselves have murdered for alleged collaboration. The dead man was a Palestinian who worked as a border guard for the Israelis, one of hundreds of men and women murdered by their own compatriots for supposedly helping the Israeli occupier. Obeying a PLO instruction, Amer Sadia resigned from the police. Months later, Hamas killed him. Did you receive any warning from anyone that he might be in danger, or did he receive a warning? <laughs> How did you find out he'd been murdered? من ساعدهم مثل ما أنزل بكتاب الله إنه هدول بضلهم إخواننا وبضلهم هدول أطفالنا أطفال المسلمين وأبنائنا فلذلك إذا كان إنسان واحد خطأ مش لازم نحمل خطأه على كل بيته على كل أسرته بضلهم هدول إخواننا وأحبابنا ولازم نراعيهم 
بشكل جيد زيهم زي بيوتنا كلنا Adhan, do you really think that killing is the only answer or is the right answer to the problem of collaboration? طالما ما فيش يعني توبة وما بيرجعوش عن الطريق السيء تبعهم هذا هو الطريق تبعتهم الوحيدة إنه هي فيش خلاص طالما بتديم تحذير واحد واثنين وثلاثة وما فيش ما بيرتجعوش بيرتجعوش خلاص. But is your struggle against Israel a nationalist struggle? or a struggle about God, or what you think God wants you to do? صراع عقائديا والقضية تبعتنا قضية إسلامية عقائدية مش قضية وطن ولا قضية أرض قضية إسلام عقائدي دين إقبال دين قرآن إقبال توراة وهذه الأرض أرض مقدسة أرض إسلامية هذه أرض الميعاد أرض الإسلام مش أرض اليهود هذا الحرب اللي بيننا وبينهم حرب عقائدي حتى ولو في فصائل بتعدد او في بعض الدول بتقول انه هذه مشكله قوميه او حرب قوميه لا هذه حرب عقائديا جيل بسلمها لجيل لكتاب الله جيل بسلمها لجيل هذه حرب حرب عقائديا مش وطنيه That night, the shooting we had anticipated began. Palestinians shot down by the Israelis not far from this Gaza hospital. Hey, hey, Here, mm -hmm. under uh, yeah. under the tongue, the mouth cavity, uh, it's penetrating uh, the brain uh, cavity. It's in brain damage now. Severe, severe bleed in the uh, due to left uh, ear. Mm -hmm. How many people have been brought into your hospital tonight? Uh, uh, till now, about uh, 25. Uh, from which area of? Uh, from uh, the Tufah area. area. But this one, uh, it's shooting. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, in the front of the hospital. In front of the Just hospital. Here. Yes. He died in front of us last night, comma, shot in the head by Israeli troops, comma, until the heartbeat, hyphenated heart, hyphen beat, on the screen above his bed registered a thin green line. Point. Open quotes. Allahu Akbar. A L L A H U. One word. Capital A for Alpha. K H B A R. Allahu Akbar. God is great. Fearful that the Israelis would take his body away, the dead man's family wrapped his remains in a blanket and hijacked it from the hospital. Another martyr to the Islamic cause. But Hamas are not the only fundamentalists in Gaza. This Jewish settlement is built on Arab land, and it will stay here, protected by the Israeli army, long after Yasser Arafat has moved his men into Gaza City. An Israeli town in the middle of Arafat's new Palestine. The Arab people here do hate me. They hate Jews. They hate the establishment of a Jewish state here. Because they think this land is theirs, don't Yes, they? absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. It's definitely a war over land, among other things. It's also a war between Islam and Judaism, but it's a war over the lands. Here, as well as for Tel Aviv, or for Jaffa, or for Jerusalem, I think the Arabs also claim those areas as well. 
but one has to take into, a, uh, into account, I think, your Bible. Uh, Christians as well as Jews can go read the Bible and find out who God promised the land to. It was clearly the Jews and the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And well, uh, we yeah. are those descendants. The yes. Arabs are not. There are Palestinian Arabs who are becoming more and more religious. They're turning to God rather than the PLO. I'm thinking about Hamas in particular. Yeah. And you're a religious Jew. What do you feel about this? Aren't you a bit worried about it? Uh, I don't recognize their Quran as being a valid document um, as in terms of understanding God. We have our Torah, which we believe is the is divine truth and rev from uh, that was revealed to us at Sinai, and this is what we go by. Do you feel this is Israel here? Yes, I do. Why? Because this is part of the land that God gave to Israel. Samson was here. And uh, there's a myth that Jonah was uh, thrown up here by the whale in uh, Khan Yunus. That's why that's an every Arab town. I feel a lot of history was here. But is that sufficient to say that this is the state of Israel? Yes. For me, it, for me it's insufficient. But what about the thousands and thousands of Arabs who say this is our land? We've lived here for several generations. Why do you merely argue, OK, well, in the Bible, but that's thousands of years ago. The whole reason why the state of Israel was given to the Jewish people in 1948 was because of our biblical claim. It had nothing to do with how many years anyone had lived anywhere. The only claim that the Jews have on this land that the Israeli people have is the Bible. And if we don't believe the Bible and the board, then there's, we really have nothing to back our claim. Jerusalem, holy to Jews, Muslims, and Christians, has been illegally annexed by Israel which still claims it to be its eternal and unified capital. East of the city, outside the internationally recognized border of Israel, only a little bit of the old rural Palestine remains. And the huge Jewish settlements built on Palestinian land are now cities. a ring of Israeli concrete around Jerusalem. It takes a brave Palestinian to hold out here, to cling onto his own land in the face of Israel's expanding settlements. But in this little patch of orchard, is a family that's refused to leave its land despite an order to get out. Mohammed Khatib and his son have been told to leave their home to make way for a settlement for Jews, some of them from as far away as Russia. has your family owned this land here? Uh, we own it uh, as long as we live. It's inherited from our grandfathers and fathers as well. How many years do you think that is? More than 100 years? Yes. Do you have the documents to prove this? Do you have the original deeds and papers proving? Oh, of course we have. We have the documents from uh, the Ottoman period and from the period of the British mandate also. 
and you have your tax forms, you have the documents showing that this bit of yes, land which we're all, on now... All of this, yes, um, we have. Why is he fighting for his house? Ask him, would you? Because it is his house. Would you ask him? Why do you say that you want to make sure that you don't go to the house? حارب او بت معلوم قد ما بقدر ما بقدر بخليش الدار تروح ابدا مره يعني يعني بروح واحنا وهاي ولا بخلي الدار تروح اذا بنت ومرت ابوي وجدي و... وجد جدي يخرج شو معنا شوف يا كلبي لا بناكل ولا بنشرب ولا بننام والله المرض طب فينا ومرضه هيوتنا من اللي جرالنا يعني اخرى الواحد يطلع من داره ومن بيته وين نروح؟ لنا قدره نروح نقعد في دور الناس احنا معيلين وختي بحر علي عاجز واحنا عجاز ومراضه مش ظلم هذا اللي احنا فيه؟ سليمان وات از ذيس دوكيومنت وي هاف هير؟ اتس ا وارنينج فور اس تو ليف ذا هاوس تو ليف اور هاوس ذيس از ذا اوفيشال نوتيس تو كويت يس ناو ذيس از ان هيبرو دو يو سبيك هيبرو؟ نو نوت فيري ماتش وات هاف يو دون ويز ذيس دوكيومنت؟ وير از ذا اوريجينال؟ Uh, we gave it to our lawyer, Jonathan Kutab. Kutab? Yes. Jonathan Kutab. And he is in East Jerusalem? Yes, in East Jerusalem. Okay. Although annexed by Israel, the center of East Jerusalem is still ostentatiously Arab. Israelis fear they'll be attacked here. Israeli taxi men don't like to drive on this side of the city. Palestinian Centre for the Study of Non-Violence, that sounds promising. Jonathan Kutab, there's our man. He was given a charge sheet saying that he has to turn over mm -hmm. his property to the state. But you see, it was needed for a public purpose. Public purpose meaning? Hospitals, schools, uh, roads, uh, something that benefits the community. So we were told that the public purpose was a special scheme for building your own home. Ah. I said, wonderful. He's been trying very hard to build a home for his son on this land, but was told you couldn't build on it. So now if you can build on it, he would be glad to build a unit, a single apartment here, in return for turning over his property. He doesn't want money, but he wants to participate in this wonderful public scheme. And? Well, he was told, I'm afraid you're not a member of the public we intend to serve because the only people who are entitled under this program are either new immigrants or those who have served in the army. But he can't serve in the army. Well, he said our army. This has to be the Israeli army. If the purpose for which this confiscation occurred is to serve Jews and Jews only, and excludes him, we object. Above Mohammed Khatib's home, the settlements continue to be built. And among the settlers moving in are Europeans. Sonia Leani was born in France. Et combien d'argent vous avez payé pour cet appartement ici? Je dois dire le prix. Oui, oui, monsieur. 190 000 dollars. Ouf, c'est extraordinaire. Mmh, très bel appartement, six mmh. pièces, mmh. avec euh, deux, deux balcons mmh. et un très grand jardin. Mais vous n'avez pas la peur d'habiter ici Pas du tout. Pas dans, ce n'est pas dangereux Non, pas du tout. Mickey Molad is head of the Settlements Residents um, Association. About Arabs and Jews, mm -hmm. and here I'll let you understand a bit of the geography. Over here where the minaret is, the mm -hmm. mosque, 
This is a village which is outside of Jerusalem. And it's obviously an it Arab Muslim. It is an Arab Muslim. village, Muslim. It's called Chizme. In front of us, you see your build your own house scheme, mm -hmm. where we see on the right hand of it, we see an Arab house. Mm -hmm. And his was owner of part of the land, and he wanted to buy... Mr. Molad has been following the story of Mohammed Hatib and the Palestinians' efforts to keep his land. So he went to court because... Because he wanted, he said, it's part of my land, I'm willing to pay for it again, mm -hmm. but I want the right to buy on it, and now it's in court and we will wait and see. It will Why be very interesting. Him, uh, because he's an Arab, he's not Jewish. Do you think it's fair that it's still in the courts? I mean, shouldn't the Israelis just say, fine, this man wants to be with us? Um, if you talk fairness, maybe you're right. But uh, we live in a society where there are certain laws, and um, if I would have been him, I wouldn't even try to go and live within a dense Jewish settlement. It, it won't fit in. There will be problems. Hi, it's Robert here. How are you? Fine. Listen, I'm going to be going up to Acre from Jerusalem. Yes, <laughs> I thought you'd say that. OK, fine. I'll call you from there. Bye-bye. It was time to find the home that Yosef Shibel had told me about back in Beirut, the home he fled from 45 years ago the home to which he cannot return. He had, after all, drawn me his own map of how to find it. And there it was, 45 years on, with the same trees that Yusuf Shibel's family had planted in the garden. I told the Israelis there how Yusuf Shibel left the home they now regard as theirs. Old Svi Gross had moved in two years after Mr. Shibel fled Palestine and had handed the house on, legally under Israeli law, to his son. What do you feel about Mr. Shibel, the man who used to live here and whose home this was and who left? <laughs> מהסיפורים שלכם, שמעתי שהוא בן אדם מאוד נחמד, בן אדם מאוד פתוח. ואם אנחנו בני אותה דעה, אז uh, welcome, תבואו לכאן, שתי כוס קפה איתנו. צבי גרוס was a holocaust survivor from Poland. As a young man, he was living in the small Polish town of Trebinia when the Germans invaded. He was in his family home when the Nazis came to round up the Jews. אחר כך באו, פתחו את הדרך בכוח. בכוח, הכניסה הביתה, ראוס, 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 כולם ראוס. אני חיביתי בתוך המיטה, ככה, בשני מיטות סוגות, אז הכנסתי עליי, ככה, הם עשו עם זה, עם בגנטים. לקחו את האבא, לקחו את כולם מהבית, לרנק, שזה היה פשוט. שם היה במחנה עובד, הוא היה אדם בריא. ב-44 היה כולם חולים לטיפוס. הוא מת מאחרונים. אח שלי לקחו אותו למחנה, הוא היה במחנה, ושם נפטר. באיזה שנה אני לא יודע. הוא לא חזר הביתה. What happened? Now, your mother, she was killed by the Nazis. Mother, alcha le machne rekurs, ishama alcha yashar le masrafa, le gazim. Ilo yedat ayom maya petreblinka. And do you know what year this happened in? What date exactly? Arbaim v'shalosh. As I understand it, one road comes down here, your houses, one, two, three, four, five, 
and there's a factory. Now, is this, is this correct as it is? There's a road here. Another refugee. Here, and a factory. Another map. Where is Rennick? Where is Rennick here? Rennick there. Rennick is here? Yeah. And this is the factory at this place here? Yeah. OK. And all this is Trebinia? Yeah, Trebinia, yeah. Is it the west or the east side of Trebinia? There, Rennick, I am. It's mm -hmm. there. Mm-hmm. It's there. It's there, yeah. Before the war, Trebinia was a Jewish town. Today, there are no Jews. Hitler saw to that. Well, Mr. Mr. Gross's map has Rennick here, which is this is Rennick. But which way round is yeah, it? This is a question. Well, if this it's is... this way, his house is down there on the end, because that's Rennick. The Rennick corner is down there, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a down it. Yes, way. yes. It, it means he's up here. Well, there must be people here who are alive. Let's go find someone who can tell them. Okay. Let me find you when the Germans came to Trebinia, they took all the uh, Jews and he saw the Germans entering each single house and they were driving them all out into the street. What does he feel in his heart when he thinks of those people who are dead now? Well, man tends to forget after some time. Sometimes when he lies down, it all shows up in front of him, all those people from the past. But it's such a long time. And you just forget things. Even after death, the Jews of Trebinia had their enemies. Some of the Jews killed in the Holocaust were buried here. After the war, a few survivors returned to restore the cemetery. But now it's been desecrated, and no one knows who did it. On her way to the Treblinka death camp, we know that Mrs. Gross was taken in a sealed train across this river. And we know that the train stopped here to change locomotives and moved into this forest. A symbolic graveyard of boulders now stands on the spot where 800,000 Jews, among them Mrs. Gross, were murdered. This is the photograph of a Jewish lady called Mrs. Gross. She comes from Trebinia and she was sent to Treblinka during the war. Is there any way we can find out what happened to her? Proszę Państwa, jest kłopot, ponieważ nie odzyskano żadnej dokumentacji. Obóz był likwidowany w 1943 roku. Hitlerowcy bądź zniszczyli, bądź wywieźli. Nie mamy żadnych dokumentacji odnośnie ludzi, którzy tu zginęli. Wiemy natomiast z jakich miast. fled their homes in 1948 when Israel was created.
the land these Palestinians owned, is now in Israel. Did your father have papers to show the owners? Of course, of course, they have documents. These documents show all the property which my father owned in Acre, mm -hmm. including the house. Mm -hmm. And the house was built at what, what year was the house built? 1935. And he was the first owner? Yes. House. He built the house. He, he built owned. it himself? Yes. Yosef Shibel fled his home in what is now Israel 45 years ago, and like the thousands who ran away during the Jewish-Arab war, he's forbidden by the Israelis from returning. We thought that we were leaving for just a short period of time. We left our furniture. We just picked our light material and clothes, and then we left north to Lebanon. And what else do you have? I have here two photos, one with my friends. Where are you on this picture? This is my, to the far left. You're smiling a The Lebanese are forced to share their country. Around 400,000 Palestinians also live in Lebanon, but it's not their home. Home, for them, is in a country called Palestine, to which they cannot return, despite the PLO-Israeli accord. Most of these are Palestinians whose families... ...organization aiming to liberate uh, Palestine and establishing uh, an Islamic state rather than a secular state. When you say Palestine, you mean all of British Mandate Palestine, including Israel? That's right. But to achieve this Islamic state and to struggle for it, Hamas is fighting. When the Israelis killing our kids, our children, shelling our houses, what, what you could do? Hamas and all other organizations will fight against this uh, kind of treatment of our people inside the occupied territories. Do you really think you can win against the Israelis? Yes, I am sure. But Israel has America on its side. And we have our own power, which is Allah. Even for Western reporters like myself, it's not easy to travel the 100 miles from my home in Beirut to Israel and to the land the refugees call Palestine. Today, I'm in that picture. Yeah. Where is this taken? In this is at the backyard of our house, the eastern part. And this, I'm riding a bicycle here, coming from the southern street, which leads to our house. How old are you here in this picture? 13 years. This is just before you left? Just five, six months before I left. Could you draw me a map of where your house is in Acre? Of course, I can draw a map. This is a roundabout? Yeah, this okay. is a... Uh, it's a main road intersection. Yeah, it was a main road intersection. And after you cross 500 yards, you go to your left 400 yards. And there is the house of my father, Ahmed Shiv. Yusuf, that map is so good. If I went to Acre, do you think I could, I could find your house from that I'm map? sure you'll find it within a few minutes. It, it has if you follow the map accurately. Are you sure it hasn't changed? I don't know what happened in those 45 years.
45 years after Yusuf Shibel fled his home, the Israelis forced another group of Palestinians into Lebanese exile, this time from the occupied West Bank and Gaza. They formed a small Islamic Republic here in the mountains. These men are members of Hamas, Israel's most dangerous Palestinian enemy. They now wish to destroy Yasser Arafat's peace deal with Israel. Thanks very much, Abba. Thank you. These were not ordinary Palestinian refugees. They were to become the most famous Palestinian deportees in the world, trapped on a hillside between Lebanese and Israeli front lines. But for these men, their exile meant something else, a chance to plan the religious Islamic nation they want to create when they go back home. Their anger against the West can be found not only here in Lebanon, but inside the West Bank and Gaza itself, among Muslims in Egypt, even now among the Muslims of Bosnia. Hamas is an Islamic organization.